Hello everybody. You're on the UFO channel. My name is Strange, and I believe that people should know the truth. Today, I want to share some news with you. More precisely, we will talk about squillings. A lot of people were interested in them and scared. From all that you and I have learned together from that DVR recording, squillings are able to take control of their victims, and apparently they can read either all or some part of the memory. This, of course, cannot be frightened. My sources are silent, and not because they don't want to help me, no. The US government is doing everything possible to find these creatures and capture at least one of them. Well, or, as a last resort, just destroy everyone. Phantom, Stephen Greger, all are silent. And this cannot but be alarming. No, don't think about it. They answer me, but they have nothing to share with me. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. It's not for nothing that I used to be an excellent scout. Methodically devoting an hour or two to this every day, I began to look for at least some grains of possible information. I was well aware that the public was not even aware of the threat hanging over us all. Maybe you don't guess either. Let me explain to you. If these squillings make their way to the highest levels of government or worse, to the top of the military sector, then the existence of our entire race will be in jeopardy. And I, as one of the main fighters for the truth, whatever it may be, cannot allow this. The first search method I identified was reading newspaper columns that published information about missing people. But this method had a significant disadvantage. I'm alone, but there is a lot of information. Moreover, the human factor cannot be excluded. Here, either everyone fell under the control of the squillings from among the abducted, or some part fell victim to maniacs and serial killers. This is where I define the use of the second strategy, namely the search for a certain gray area or even an entire region next to that ill-fated road to nowhere. After all, it was there that it became known about these creatures for the first time. To be honest, I don't think the Centauruses or this mysterious Arthur have anything to do with them. Both have their own special goals. Of course, we will definitely find out about them. I will personally make sure that people know the truth about them for sure. Nevertheless, I began to build lines of possible relationships on my special board. I began to highlight the news about missing people whose kidnappers had never contacted the police and relatives with red lines. Then, already in black, I began to highlight the regions where the abductions occurred most often. After a week of such painstaking work, I finally identified a single city around which strange things were happening. It was Carmel. He was in the same state where I live, California. If the information from Wikipedia is correct, then the city is located in Monterey County. The population of the city is only 1,350 souls, and it was near the city that people disappeared in nearby settlements. This, of course, cannot but be alarming. In particular, I was surprised that the local authorities were powerless. In general, they can be understood. The kidnappers did not demand any ransoms. They didn't even call or threaten, as is usually the case. To be honest, I didn't come up with a better idea than to go to this town myself and scout the situation. You'll probably think I'm completely crazy. Maybe that's how it is. But don't get me wrong either. How can I stay away when something happens that I'm more or less familiar with? Specifically, that squillings are gradually and methodically taking control of people. What would you do in my place? Please share your opinion in the comments below the video. I remember it was the beginning of March. It was warm in California, so I took the cash and dressed in a simple way. I also took with me my black 38 caliber revolver, as reliable as a Swiss watch. For some reason, this kind of semi-automatic weapon has always aroused more confidence in me, and I went to the town of Carmel. It is also sometimes called Carmel by the Sea, which means the location in the bay of the same name on the Pacific Ocean. That is, it is such an average small fishing town. It took me a whole day's journey. Several times I had to stop for a nap. My favorite bands were playing on the radio every now and then from Johnny Cash with his constant notes of the far wild west. Before, in fact, cool rock bands like Starset and Too Close to Touch. Listening to them, I tried to convince myself that nothing would happen to me. Although somewhere in the back of my mind I had strong doubts. Am I doing the right thing by putting myself at risk? What am I trying to prove and to whom? Probably it's all because of my long-standing desire to see the aliens firsthand. Maybe even fight some of them. And even though I am already 37 years old, some of my youthful maximalism still remains with me. And where am I now? I'm going to scout the situation in some coastal town with my own hands. They lived, damn it. 
For all these thoughts, I drove to the city. I stopped to live in one of the local motels and immediately went to bed because it was already late around midnight. I put the gun under my pillow, just in case. I was haunted by the feeling that someone was watching me. In the morning, I went out for a walk and went to some local cafe to have breakfast. The first thing that seemed suspicious to me was that there were almost no people on the street. Although it was a working day and no, no, but at least even the elderly had to go somewhere. The streets were practically empty. But in the Café Manalay, where I finally wandered in, there were four other guests besides me. Whether they're local or not, I still don't understand. I ordered myself a portion of pancakes with blackberry jam, coffee with cream, and a couple of toasts with butter. I was served by a very nice waitress named Stacy. It was she who I began to ask first about all the strange things that could be happening. Seizing the moment when she was pouring me coffee, I asked. Your name is Stacy, right? Yes, it is. Is there anything else you want to order? We have a very tasty banana ice cream if you want. I'll keep in mind, thank you. Please tell me, have you noticed anything unusual? Unusual? No, I haven't noticed. Unless no one wants to eat our banana ice cream. By the way, it's very tasty. Would you like to? No, no, I don't want to order ice cream yet. I'm sorry. It's a pity. It's very tasty here. Well, if you have no more questions, then I'll go and she left. I didn't even have time to ask her anything else. Her behavior alarmed me, and I also managed to attract the attention of other visitors. They all looked at me quite hostile. I tried to smile at one of them as kindly as possible, and even raised my white coffee cup, making a gesture that I was inviting him to clink glasses with me. In response, the unknown man also smiled. However, it is somehow too wide. It looked to be honest, creepy, and I quickly returned to my meal. I still have an image of him in my head, broad-shouldered, with a thick black beard, but a bald head. He was wearing green trousers and a red plaid shirt on top. He looked like a farmer to me. His friends didn't really stand out in their clothes, plus or minus they looked the same as this guy. The pancakes, however, turned out to be a little undercooked. I don't know what the reason was. I raised my hand, beckoning Stacy to my table. But before I could say anything to her, she immediately leaned towards me. The plunging neckline of her uniform opened up to my gaze, and I was speechless for a second. The girl, in turn, put her hand on mine and whispered in my ear. My shift is ending, mister. To me or to you? I'd better come to you, miss, I replied, coming to my senses. I just live in a hotel, and that's why I'm embarrassed. Whatever you say, mister. Wait for me here. And your order is on the house? The cook gave it to me. Now I'm giving it to you, and she left. I can't say that I was deprived of female attention, but the whole situation aroused only suspicion in me. Everything was too sugary, and the waitress was suddenly interested in me. And somehow I managed to get her interested, and they paid my bill, even though I only had to pay $10 according to the menu. The four people were still sitting at the table. Some of them stared at me intently, and the man who answered my smile with his strange and frightening one, he smiled again in his own way. And all this made me pretty tense. I checked the gun that was in my right jeans pocket. He was there and it calmed me down a little. After a couple of minutes, I left the cafe and waited for Stacy. I was really curious. Was this all some kind of conspiracy against me? Or did this eccentric girl really like me? It took about three minutes before she came out. She was still wearing the same cafe uniform. It's strange. But I thought that the workers always change into their usual clothes, I thought then. But he didn't say anything out loud. But Stacy said, I do not know your name, mister. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. My name is Andrew. I introduced myself with my assumed name. I also had all the documents in that name with me, just in case. Well, Andrew, it's not far. Let's go. I'm burning up with impatience. By the way, how long are you staying? For a couple of days. Be sure to try our banana ice cream. Absolutely, I said. I'm pretty sick of this mention of ice cream. No, of course, I love him, and different kinds, but this is an imposition. We passed by an alley, and the girl took me into it and pressed me against the wall. I managed to spot a fence at the end of this alley as a possible escape route in case of anything. Stacy took my hands and put them on her chest. Her eyes were very playful, but somehow empty. I can't stand it. Let's do everything here. Do you like fast or slow? Both, I replied warily. Something was wrong but I kept trying to figure out where to expect a trick. Stacy kissed me on the neck. 
She ran her hot tongue over it and then bit it lightly with her teeth. I stoically endured, waiting for what would happen next. And this moment has come. She leaned into my ear and said in a low voice, Let's become one, Andrew. In general, this phrase has a very ambiguous meaning. But in my case, she clearly wanted to subjugate me. At the same moment, I felt something strange and slimy crawling down my right arm. It feels like a snail crawling slowly. It feels pleasantly cold to the body. All my instincts immediately screamed, and I pushed the girl away from me. She hit her back against the brick of the building and went limp. A small gray worm was crawling along my arm. In some ways, even looked like a leech. I immediately hit him with my left hand and he fell down. My right arm was not working properly. It felt like she was numb. I had to reach into my right trouser pocket with my left hand. And when I pulled out my revolver, the worm was trying to hide under a pile of garbage. With a gun in my left hand, although I'm right-handed, I started kicking through old garbage bags with my feet. And when I found this creeping thing, I pointed a gun at it and fired. The creature screamed horribly. It was a low-frequency squeak, but I remember it for the rest of my life, you can be sure. He didn't stop me from shooting the worm again. The squeaking stopped immediately. I went down to the ground and took the casings just in case. I came up with an idea, and I took out my mobile phone and took a picture of this creature. You can see it now on your screens. When I turned around, Stacy was still unconscious. I turned her onto her back with my left hand, not without difficulty because I was curious. Where was the creature that kept the girl under control? And I found her, squilling sucked on the girl's lower back. I tried to take it off, but it was firmly attached to her. Moreover, when I tried to do this, he started squeaking disgustingly, and Stacy herself screamed in tune with him. A few minutes later, three people entered the alley. I didn't like them right away. Every single one of them was armed with bats. Moreover, among them was that bald man from the cafe in a red plaid shirt. He said loudly, Do you offend girls and even kill our relatives? This is not good, Andrew. Now we will teach you good manners. Well, after that, what's after? I asked in surprise before he could finish. After that, you will become one of us. And the man smiled eerily at the full width of his mouth again. I didn't like that prospect. I turned to the iron fence and slowly began to climb over it to the other side. The sensitivity in my right hand was gradually recovering. As soon as the painful climb was over, I ran to the motel. Fortunately, it was very close. I also had my car keys with me. I confess, dear viewers and subscribers, for the first time in my life, I did not pay for my stay in a motel. But the situation was critical. After all, who knows how many more people were under the control of these creatures. I got into the car and started the engine. He turned around and began to leave the city quickly. The streets were still very empty. No one tried to stop me. There were no cars on the roads either. Pressing the gas pedal, I tried to leave the city of Carmel as soon as possible. And 10 hours later, I got to my house. Lady Luck was on my side because I didn't come across a single patrol car that could stop me. When I entered the house, I immediately closed all the doors. I put the revolver on the bedside table next to it. On one hand, the purpose of the trip was justified and I personally found new information. On the other hand, I almost died, and I was still shivering. This city, in a good way, needs to be isolated, or maybe even conduct some kind of military operation, but I do not know who I could turn to for this. Dear subscribers and viewers, if you have friends who serve in military structures, please show them this video. I am sure that only by uniting we will be able to cope with this threat. I, in turn, will also not stay away and will connect all my connections. This rot needs to be cleaned out. Strangers with you. Out of touch.